My name is Anwar Gonzalez. Today we are going to be doing a poetry analysis for my Composition 2 class, Mr. Johnson. We will be analyzing Jose Soto's brief history. So the first line that the poet says is, this is a brief history of the education of the Venezuelan youth. Right off the bat, you can already tell that the poem is based on the education of a young Venezuelan. When you hear education, you assume it to be attributed to an academic sense. And that's fair, but keep in mind that Venezuela is a third world republic that is constantly dealing with crisis that affects the education for the youth. Venezuelan families tend to educate their young to a more conventional sense, such as that of craft, handiwork, since the education is more of a long run that hardships can't wait for. So that is definitely one thing to keep in mind before proceeding. First grade, my tongue has never been able to speak elegantly, except in math class, where my hands became an extension of my language. My hands could reach places to comprehend the numbers that would structure the most of our daily lives. So his tongue wasn't very elegant in the first grade. Older generations were taught that if you gotta make money, you gotta you got get it yourself. Hardships are not gonna just go away if you don't do anything. So that's one thing to keep in mind, that older generations grew up on that basis. Statistically, education has become much more prominent in today's day and age. Growing up in a third world country just exasperates the reality of attending a university, especially if you're dealt an unfortunate hand. And consequently, his tongue isn't very elegant, since the domestic situation cares little of his vocabulary, since youth are taught that the conventional education is much more profitable in their contemporaneous sense. Basically saying that they really don't care about how the child is talking. He's talking because he's going to develop much more better you know, working in labor jobs, getting them out of hardships, as opposed to being in education that's going to take some time. However, his hands could reach places to comprehend the numbers that would structure the most of our daily lives. He understands that education is something that that young individual himself can accomplish in Venezuela. He knows he is capable, but it's just not realistic given his situation. 1 through 10, his daughter Sin always understood and she was sweet like honey. And that's exactly what she called me. So 1 through 10, it's what the foundation is built on. The Ms. Dogginson that he mentioned is the educator in his elementary system. The teacher understands when he is suffering. She's sweet to him like honey, understanding and cooperating in any way that she can. Using these similes, the poet emphasizes how sweet she was in a demeanor sense and not actually in that literal tasting sense, you know. Pipes and vents react to my happiness and cold air starts flowing. I look outside, I see that winter is coming. This is heavy imagery. Emphasizing his happiness of how he feels about sitting in a classroom, understanding concepts you could only learn, well, in a classroom he takes it a step further and says he looks outside and sees that winter coming well would you rather be inside in the nice cool air learning fascinating concepts that hopefully will one day lead you into a higher level of education that will one day lead you into a job that isn't necessarily a handy job that their families are more prone to and you are still facing hardships so yes heavy imagery second grade my tongue is prone to getting me in places i don't want to be who knew that learning english from adam levine or maury porvich was not ideal deal to be applied in recess so right here he's being a bit goofy he's saying that the newly found vocabulary he has learned from mainstream artists such as adam levine has gotten him in situations that he does not want to be in he does this to add comic relief and further engage you into his poem and i quickly get taught that being shoved in snow is called whitewashing this is also imagery and can be interpreted in multiple ways being shoved in snow can mean that you are further being emerged into the snow bank that is mainstream media and you yourself are a projection of what mainstream media offers this can also be interpreted in a literal sense being shoved into a snowbank can mean that you are literally covered in snow and whitewashed since your prior adam levine influenced tongue got you in a pickle and they threw you in a snowbank my classrooms are always so cold fourth grade my tongue has learned that it is better to be alone and happy than speak and struggle so the classrooms are always so cold that cold is reflecting back to his prior use in the poem where he attributed to a happy sense so he likes school the classroom is always so cold it reminds him of that happy memory that he had before fourth grade my tongue has learned that it is better to be alone and happy than speak and struggle this is brought back to our current youth and the way it operates it's insane when you realize how self-conscious a fourth grader can actually be and how cruel some individuals can be facing hardships already at his home and the dilemmas his tongue has learned it is better to be alone and happy than speak and struggle and he learned this in more ways you know bullying the domestic hardships that he's facing but but then lunchtime comes and brown paper bags become palm trees. The contents within its seashells and frijolitas become frijolitas. Well, everybody is happy when it's lunchtime, right? The imagery continues comparing his lunch routine with paradise-like pleasures. Paper bags become palm trees. The contents within it become seashells and well, the frijolitas, yeah. The brown paper bags remind me that cold lunches never tasted so warm. Back to the imagery. Warm is attributed to a nostalgic sense that takes him back when times were simpler, you know, in his fourth grade lunch 
lunchtime recess where he was eating lunch. Even though it was cold, the brown paper bags remind him that cold lunches never tasted so warm. Fast forward to eighth grade where my tongue has made friends after being tempered in snow. Well, since his tongue experienced the tempered snow in fourth grade when he got into a pickle with his prior classmates, it's finally more open now in eighth grade where he begins to open up and make new friends. There are a lot of moving parts on this next specific piece of the monologue that makes the poem more powerful and engaging. Let's start with, it is now sluggish, homesick. I can no longer comprehend the logical language, but I can now write. He speaks about how he loves his home and his roots, but how he can no longer comprehend their logical language, what they want from him and what they expect of his future endeavors, but how he can now write his educational papers using his newly found academic language. I still flinch every time the AC comes on, and when I sit down in writing class, snowflakes talk to me. 10th grade, I fall in love with an avalanche. My tongue has stopped moving. My pen ink is white, but my parents cannot read it more clearly. They ask me, when did I stop writing in red, yellow, and blue? He is symbolizing his newly built relationship tying it with the past winter related imagery he used before snowflakes talk to him can be referred to as the social relationships he's built while the avalanche can be attributed to the romantic relationship that he has built they ask me when did i stop writing in red yellow and blue this refers to the tongue of their native roots and how it stopped moving in lieu of their education the pen ink white brings back to how the family is traditional in the sense of their traditions and regime they ask me when did i stop writing in red yellow and blue related to the venezuelan flag which is composed of those colors essentially they're saying when did he decide he wasn't going to follow in their footsteps 12th grade i learned now is never here and we never are but we are always becoming yet welcomed by the blizzard in school lovers and friends this part of the poem addresses the conformity of his social romantic and educational relationships that he has built and that was only possible because of the educational system but my parents remind me that home comes in the shape of brown paper bags so i'm still the palm trees i'm still the coral beaches i'm still the goddamn fricolitas and i will never be translated so easy because i'm still venezolano he finished his monologue with imagery that addressed past points and illusions used his translation may not be traditional but he is still venezolano Y porque con un corazón venezolano, I learned that home never fades. Even though the family may not know it, because his heart is Venezuelan, he learned that his family and traditions will never fade and only shift to the best interest of him and his family, which is what he truly wants. My freshman year of college, I walk to my writing class. I pull out a pen. I sit down. My professor asks me, so what have you learned so far? This forebode confirms his successful journey through his high school education, ending on a positive and motivational note that nicely ties his poem together. Conclusively, this poem concisely summarizes conflicts that occur not only in Venezuela, but in many parts of the world. The poem's message strikes inspiration and embeds a message of ambition in spite of adversaries. Thank you.